with so much going on, all the remodeling and changing of things from summer to fall, taking down some of the gardens and some of the plants that we've had in the past during the summer and enjoyed during the spring and summer. Also had some illness, you know, my back on out and different things that have challenged me personally that I've always been wanting to do this one series that I knew God was telling me to do and I just, I, I, it's kind of funny to say that because, you know, a lot of people go, well, you know, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is God's bugging me. <laughs> I usually say what I mean, I mean what I say. But what I mean by that is I had been wanting, and I, God had told me before to do a series called, you know, Video Spurgeon or Spurgeon Video. In this case, we're calling it Spaces Spurgeon Video because we're going to customize some things for the different sites that I have around the web so that they're focused in on specific areas, you know, that in spaces, you know, there's a, a good opportunity to use spaces as the location for Spurgeon Video. And then we'll have, you know, WordPress Spurgeon Video or Spurgeon Video WordPress and Spurgeon Video Blogger, but Blogspot. But the point being is that the focus gives the inspiration to the idea behind what God wants to do with it. Spaces, you know, kind of opening up your your mind and opening up your heart to the variety of how God speaks to us, each and every one of us, in a particular particular and peculiar way. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. And so the Holy Spirit's been bugging me about kind of getting this, you know, show on the road because I've been taking out this plants, I bought some dirt that was bad for, you know, the plants that I had and I've got a little gnats now from it that turned out to be when I was trying to save money I wound up really kind of like losing money in the long run because <laughs> it was like horrible dirt and it was actually wood chips with gnats and caterpillars all kinds of things in it that just wasn't good for plant life and so I've had to get rid of it and slowly but surely I've gotten rid of them so I could actually sit over here because I had bags full of dirt <laughs> and I had to get rid of but today I just felt overwhelmed by God God just kept pushing and pushing for me to get busy with what I was doing even though my back's still sore and I'm recovering slowly, it was time, you know, and I felt like, oh, well, Lord, I just got to do it. So here we go with, you know, Spurgeon Video, you know, and the whole idea behind Video, in case you didn't know me and you haven't seen any videos before, is the concept of relating Jesus in a personal and intimate way in a devotional type format that we would be able to express ourselves and our faith one to each other, that we would relate the facts of who Jesus is and how he talks to us through our lives, that Jesus in me is speaking to Jesus in you, and Jesus in you is speaking to me. Though I can't see you, and I don't understand quite what you're saying, but God, in my life, I can relate. And so what I do is I share my personal faith that I deal with every day of my life that I'm living, of how I live my life every single moment of the day, really. You could call it a reality television play if you wanted to, except for you know and I know that most reality television isn't real. It's scripted and contrived in a lot of ways or it's angled and cut up with the certain types of foot shots and you know theme shots so that they get the certain effect so that you are interested in what's going on. That's not the way I deal with real life. You see, I deal with real life with a real God. And because Jesus died on the cross, I take my personal life and faith pretty serious. I deal with it as though God is real because I don't know about you, but for me, God deals with me really. And I mean, He really does. And I know because I have suffered the consequences of my choices, not just by a circumstantial God that we would say, oh well, it's kind of like a kismet, mystical kind of put your faith in something you can't see, touch or feel thing. I wish it were that way because then I could get away with ignoring it if it was that kind of mystical, marvelous, wonderful, magic carpet ride. But <laughs> uh, my God's real and uh, quite frankly, He talks to me and bluntly, He makes me and causes me to understand exactly what He means and He says exactly what He says. And 
I know what he means and means what he says. And quite frankly, most of the time, I try to do what he says. I'm not going to tell you every time I do exactly what God says. No, I'm kind of one of those types of people that's just like you, stiff neck, stubborn, pride, full of arrogance, you know, and kind of acting like I'm God and he's not. But even though God speaks directly to me, you would think that I would be automatically, you know, like humble and submissive and kind of like obedient. Not. I'm like you. You know, I try to get away with what I can, even though I know he sees everything, knows everything, does everything, and proves to me every single time that, look, this is the consequence. If you do it, you want to pay the price. And sure enough, I'm getting kind of tired of the consequences. So, you know, sin may be good, but you kind of get tired of paying the price after a while. And that's why we develop our video devotional, so that we could share and relate how we experience God in a personal and intimate way. How we relate Jesus intimately in a way that we understand and comprehend between each other. And using Spurgeon as a master in his day or a sage of his time, he was a teacher that provided for a school of pastors a learning environment for them to become better acquainted with their calling and their vocation in ministry. And so that's why I wanted to specify and specifically deal with Spurgeon in a video format because then I could talk directly to pastors, which you may say, well, I'm not a pastor. And I could talk directly to missionaries. You could say, well, I'm not a missionary. And I could talk directly to elders, deacons, you know, prophets, and all those other things, and apostles, and you know, whatever they may think that they are. Because whether you know it or not, if you got saved, you're one of those. Everyone is a missionary. Everyone's been given a mission. And that mission is to share Jesus, is to proclaim the gospel, to go out and to preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand baptizing people in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit and making disciples of all nations. You've got, you could say a threefold ministry, you could say that parts of it are overlapping, you could say whatever you want to about it, but you can't deny the fact you're a missionary on a mission. You've been given a mission from God and that's kind of what happened when you got saved. Yeah, you may not have known that and maybe you didn't see it in the fine print, but guess what? It's in the Word of God. Check Matthew at the end. And so, preparing ourselves and being made ready by the church to go out and do the work that we're supposed to be doing means that the church was designed in order to equip us and to encourage us and to exhort us to go and do what we're supposed to do. And that's kind of what I got when I first got saved, was that I had a marvelous, wonderful church that empowered me and strengthened me and gave me all the tools I needed in order to study and set me out in the ministry, and bingo, I became a missionary at large. Praise the Lord. And I served in lots of different capacities throughout my life as a born again Christian. But the one that I found most success in, that I've rejoiced in putting all the aspects of my life together into one place at one point in time, in exactly the way that God ordained my life to be, was video. <laughs> video devotionals. Wow. Imagine that. Video devotionals. And so Vidivo was born by way of getting to the place where finally I said, hey, you know what, I've been sitting behind the scenes long enough. It's time that I got up in front, out front, outright, and just told people what it is they know, they've already heard, they already understand, but what I can encourage them and relate to them about what they should be doing in pursuing onward with their relationship with God. Because if they haven't heard His voice, they need to recognize that you're not supposed to just be reading and pretending you can hear God. You're supposed to be contending for your faith that you come to the place where you do hear His voice and He speaks to you directly. Now that is, at times, in His Word, but it's also audibly through some means. Some capacity with which God chooses to reveal Himself to you will be God speaking to you by His voice. And Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and they know me, and they went off follow the voice of another. So, the evil is always built upon the premise and the premise and the foundation of God's Word being made real and alive to you by way of Him revealing Himself so that you would know Him, Jesus, in a personal, intimate way and relate to His voice speaking to you as you know He said He would do. 
He didn't say you would read his voice. He didn't say you would believe in his voice. He said you would hear his voice. And we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So, Fidevo Spurgeon, I'm really excited about getting into the nitty gritties of ministry because, after all, that's what Spurgeon does, did, and will do in your life as you study him and apply the word of God to what you are going through as Jesus relates it to you by his spirit. So today, and at evening time it shall be light from Zechariah, I believe, 14.7. I love Roman numerals. makes me really kind of stretch myself. Oftentimes we look with forebodings to the time of old age, forgetful that at even time it shall be light. To many saints, old age is the choicest season in their lives. A balmier air fans the mariner's cheek as he nears the shore of immortality. Fewer waves ruffle his sea and quiet reigns, deep, still, and solemn. From the altar of age, the flashes of the fire of youth are gone. But the more real flame of earnest feeling remains. The pilgrims have reached the land Beulah, that happy country whose days are as the days of heaven upon earth. Angels visit it, celestial gales blow over it, flowers of paradise grow in it, and the air is filled with seraphic music. Some dwell here for years, and others come to it but a few hours before their departure. But it is an Eden on earth. We may well long for that time when we shall recline in its shady groves and be satisfied with hope until the time of fruition comes. The setting sun seems larger than when aloft in the sky, and a splendor of glory tinges all the clouds which surround his going down. Pain breaks not the calm of the sweet twilight of age, for strength made perfect in weakness bears up with patience under it all. Ripe fruits of choice experience are gathered as the rare repast of life's evenings, and the soul prepares itself for rest. The Lord's people shall also enjoy the light in the hour of death. Unbelief laments, the shadows fall, the night is coming, existence is ending. Ah, no, no, cries faith, that night is far spent, the true day is at hand. Light has come, the light of immortality, the light of a father's waiting band of spirits. Angels waft thee away. Farewell, beloved one, thou art gone. Thou wavest thine hand. Ah, now it is light. The pearly gates are open, the golden streets shine in jasper light. We cover our eyes, but thou beholdest the unseen. Adieu, brother, thou hast light at eventide, such as we have not yet. And so you see, death was never meant to be feared, or old age to be despised, but rather to look forward to. I spent my entire life preparing for such a time as this, right now, while I have age and wisdom, while I have incurred the experiences of life and seen all that I have seen, all that I have heard and all that I have handled with my own hands. I have applied myself to that knowledge that in my latter years I would be used of God to share the things which I would relate to people in a way that they would understand and comprehend. For it is not old age that is to be despised, but it is rather wisdom to be incurred that we would recognize the things that we have been through, that I can relate to people the things which they can go to and know that Jesus is with them irregardless of what they may experience in the younger years of their life when they despair of the faith that they might have had should they but call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. For that is what old age does for you. You know you're going to make it. You know that death has no hold over you. You know Jesus. And so you can encourage the younger men to walk with God. I've seen pastors fail. I've seen pastors fall. I've seen men of God rise. I've seen men of God fall. I've seen apostles and prophets and teachers and preachers and men of, and women of God reach out for the stars and come falling down in fiery flames. And some rise above it all and reach for the heavens and be taken away. I have seen them all. Oh, I have seen the mighty fallen, and I have seen the sons of God rise out of the ashes. I have seen those who have persevered through it all in faith and maintained a constance towards that day when the Lord would take them home. Oh, I have seen it all. Because, you see, I was born again in the Jesus movement, and I have seen the beginning of the fire of those who ran out with no knowledge and no wisdom and no real foundation but declare Jesus is coming. 
and still to this day do the same. And I saw them go forward and get accomplishments to rack up in heaven that spiritual reward that they shall receive when they go home to the place where God has placed them to rest. But in the meantime, I have seen them build their ministries and build their words that they have used in order to share with the people of God the faith that they have known, the relationship that they have experienced, the oneness with God that they have been with, Jesus, in the intimacy of knowing Him. As the disciples said, that they would see the Father. And Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And we of the Jesus movement have seen Jesus, for we've seen the Lord rise in the eyes of our own brethren. And we've seen Him in our own personal struggles and trials and tribulations. And some of us do mortal deeds that we were not accomplished to do, but things that we have accomplished in the will of God the Father by way of the Holy Spirit, taking us out of our flesh into His Spirit and transporting us to places where we know not where we were at, have seen heaven open up and even God Himself revealed. For that is what old age does for those who have walked with God in the many years that they have. There are men of God whom would you but listen to their words and see their deeds, you would recognize that they have been with the Lord God Almighty. They have enjoyed the fellowship, not only of His suffering, but of His glory. And they look forward to the day when face to face they can walk again with God and talk with Him personally, intimately, really. And so Spurgeon encourages you today to be that way, to recognize that there is no fear of death. There is an anticipation of the place we're going. A joy unspeakable of the reality of our life that has been lived in this existence that we call life. And that there's something more to all of this than what you can see, what you can touch, and what you can feel. Because there is our hope, our faith, our realization that eternal life has come in the name of the Son. And that Jesus is that eternal life for us. And we look forward with Spurgeon and with Tozer and with all those who have gone before us to rejoice in the presence of God Almighty, to serve our King and lay down everything in order to be taken up again to the cross as we see Jesus crucified as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world that in eternity He still bears the scars that He bore here on earth. And that we recognize the sin and the price that was paid for us to begin our eternal life with God Almighty, our Father. That is how Spurgeon sees our life as accomplished, as purposed, as designed by God Himself to bring us to the place of knowing there is not this life only, but so much more to come. Let us then pursue on to do those things that God has called us to do in this our day that we live today and as we experience what He has for us so that we would go forward day after day until the place of old age when we shall rise once again with our God unto the heavenly kingdom and we shall see Him as He takes us home to be forever with Him. But in the meantime, let not your heart be discouraged, O young man, or that you have been failing because of youthful lusts and let not your heart be discouraged if your ministry has gone by the wayside or that you have been beaten down or oppressed and in some way failed miserably in the things that you thought you were to do. Because when you look back on your life, you'll see that God has designed purposefully your life in every step of the way. Because the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord, even though the way of a man's heart is his own. So you have chosen, O thou man of God, to go with God all the way. Let Him overcome in you anything that hinders the way, but let Him walk through you to take you to the day that you come to the salvation that we all expect to see on that day when Jesus brings us home. Don't be fearful, but be mindful that God has you right where you need to be. Because today, not only is Spurgeon telling you to be encouraged, but I say unto you, Jesus is with you. Jesus loves you, and Jesus will guide you, even unto that day when you can say, like I do, thank God, thank God for my 